In North Korea, there are no days that is celebrating anything about being a human or love or our feelings. And right now in China, guys, literally more than 30 million men, the eligible bachelors, cannot find women, cannot find women to marry. And I think that's why these girls in Pyongyang are like so wanted to be like selected by this older man who comes there to buy girls. So mining towns in North Korea has been lent to China for several hundred years. Now even selling their own people to China. What is left for North Korean people to keep? Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Yanmi Park. I'm a North Korean defector, human rights activist. So I wish you all happy belated Valentine's Day. I hope you had a wonderful time with your loved ones. <laughs> I didn't really want to post something because uh, in some ways, you know, the, in the age of social media, so many happy photos of people in love showed. And that got me a little bit sad being alone uh, on that, you know, day where you celebrate love. However, I spend the day with my family, with my son, so I, I definitely can't complain. I, but that thing made me really think of my country, North Korea, in a way that even though like a lot of single people are heartbroken on this day, uh, in a still way, it's such a beautiful to witness how the society dedicates a day for love, a romantic love. In North Korea, there are no days that is celebrating anything about being a human or love or our feelings. Every day in North Korea that exists to glorify the Kims or the party and the, you know, their ideology. The North Koreans, the days that we celebrate are like the Kim's birthdays, when they died or when they are born, or the founding party day, or the founding the North Korean army day, some battle day, literally all related to propaganda, but there is no even one day that is dedicated to celebrate being a human. And that's why I, I feel so you know, amazed to see the world like this where people are celebrating love so much. Uh, I guess at the end of the day, right, like without love, why, I guess being in love and loving something in a way that is the most beautiful thing, beautiful thing that we can do on this earth. And maybe hopefully someday I can, you know, tell my people that what Valentine's Day is and celebrate the day together with them. Anyway, so because of I'm, I'm talking about this special day, I will talk about, you know, what has been really, in a way, very disturbing the trend that North Korean regime is taking with their, you know, <laughs> actually women, their, their own people. So North Korea basically is the racist country that you can find in this 21st century. They ban international marriages and when the women actually, like myself, who escaped North Korea to go to China and be trafficked, uh, so you guys know why North Korean women usually get bought in China. It's because of uh, one child policy that the Chinese Communist Party had. I mean, a lot of people know this one child policy that only people can have one child in China and they think that, that was it. But actually, the biggest victim of this child, the one child policy is our North Korean women. So many millions of girls got killed during this uh, policy and right now in China guys literally more than 30 million men the eligible bachelors cannot find women cannot find women to marry and this is why these human traffickers are uh, demanding North Korean uh, women as a slaves to sell them to the as a bribes and uh, in this situation women get raped and get pregnant but when they get caught and sent back to North Korea, what happens to them is literally heartbreaking. The North Korean regime uh, demands these guards to kick the women the belly until the baby dies and come out, or literally just rip the belly open and get the baby out and kill the baby. So they, they, they do not accept any mixed blood. Even Chinese, like it's not like even American, right? Like, Chinese is even their ally, but imagine what they're gonna do to if the North Korean women were being mixed 
with other race, like Americans, other race, that consequences is like unthinkable. It's gonna be right there execution. Uh, so you know, of course, like racism is everywhere, but I I never seen a racism like the ones that I saw in North Korea when it comes to how they deal with like different race. However, there has been a recent trend that where the regime actually selling their own women to Chinese businessmen. Uh, so right now, basically, uh, the, until a few years ago, before the COVID you know, pandemic was hitting, when Chinese like rich businessmen who has you know like half a million dollars to spare, they would literally go to Pyongyang, and there's an agency that was set up by the North Korean regime. They pick uh, 20 pretty girls, like and everyone below like 23 or 24 years old, American age, and give the photo to this Chinese businessman. And they would literally pick five of them among those 20 photos. Then they have a date with these women per day. So they spend five days and meeting five different girls. Then at the end of the week, they have to choose who they want to take with them as a bride to China. I mean, who knows, it's going to be an official bride or just a, just a toy for this businessman. So for the you know, price that regime is taking for selling their own girls is money. It's half a million dollars. I mean, it's a lot of money. And, but the thing is that how can we put a price on a human dignity, on a human life? And even more heartbreaking about this situation is that women are like begging to go with in this in this like a settlement because life in even in capital guys for the middle class in Pyongyang is challenging really really challenging even in Pyongyang people are get frozen in the winter can't really find food that much and I think that's why these girls in Pyongyang are like so wanted to be like selected by this older man who comes there to buy girls and in a way that you know this is like what is like so shocking to me that north korea is the one of the members at, at the un and north korea is not a country it's not a, a run by a normal government it's run by mafia it's a gangster group is running this country selling their people killing their own people i mean Doing, doing the like live experiment on their citizens. This is a gangster group, but in a world that we are really living in, and they are acknowledged North Korea as if it's some normal country at the UN. And in this is like I don't even know where to like begin to tell the world that we can never accept North Korea as a normal country. And this might be a good opportunity for all of us you now, like living in Sweden, in the UK. I mean like. Spain, I mean, so many countries actually has letting North Korea have a consulate or their embassy and conduct all these illegal businesses. Okay, why are you guys who are standing up for justice letting North Korea have their embassy in your country? You know, at some point, diplomacy doesn't work. It doesn't mean that we have to invade North Korea right now, but we should, we should like, let North Korea know that the regime know that when they conduct this kind of inhuman behavior, they cannot coexist like us here. They gotta follow some common sense and international law. Anyway, I hope that wasn't too heavy and this is something that I couldn't even like map my head around. I just never never thought actually the regime can this much corrupt to the point themselves coming out and selling their own women to China and like North Korea literally has been lending their lands to China for 50, 100 years and some of them are 200 years. So mining towns in North Korea has been lent to China for several hundred years. Now even selling their own people to China, what is left for North Korean people to keep? The regime is selling off literally everything to China so they can maintain their power. But in the expense of the people, the, the price is being paid by 25 million of people. Even the Kim regime goes right now, the real concern is how much the saying that China has on literally everything in North Korea, every property, every town, every sector 
is kind of owned by China. And there's nothing left for North Korean people to take, even after the tears goes away. And this is like what I think people would really don't know how much interference that China has over North Korea. Anyway, guys, like it's uh, I I'm grateful for your support, and I hope to see you guys next time on this channel again. And I wish you a very happy and lovely day. Thank you, guys, and see you next time. Bye.